Good afternoon, it's 1st of May and we are at Kernlock. And we are at the end of the mineral extraction point at Hurry Head. And wagons were loaded up away up here at Cranny Falls, way, way up in the hill. And they took limestone down by gradient in wagons and ended up here in the port and they were exported to Scotland to be used in chemical works in Glasgow and elsewhere. Limestone was also applied to the land as an early fertiliser and Kernlock was based around this industry. And this, there was a distinctive bridge over the uh, road and it's just down there. Ah, there's the limestone cliffs. We climbed up to them some time ago and got soaked at, at Cranny Falls. And this is the wee harbour that took the limestone out. I think this harbour might have been used in Game of Thrones as well, not too sure. And there's a very nice uh, Triumph cruiser sitting over there, if I could home in on it. That's it there. Excellent job. There's some of the limestone that we're talking about. Blocks. Turnlock. Very, very narrow entrance. It's probably wider than it looks from here. Oh, limestone. It's only going to be big small boots anyway. It's not going to be big. No. There's almost two parts to the harbour here, look. There's a, that outer section. That's maybe just for coming in. But coming in and... That's for coming in. There's mm -hmm. nothing parked there. There's nothing there to do. This actually gives increased shelter. Those are house martins flying by. And this is talking about Garan Tower and the London Dairy family connection to the industry. A 
and this is where we are, Carnock, above Larn, above Belfast. And this is the track that the wagons rolled down. And there's the London Dairy Arms, named after Lady London Dairy. This is the coach house, and this is the bridge that was built so that the wagons could run down to the sea. Can't quite read the inscription. This is Kernlock Harbour again, from another vantage point. And this is looking out to sea. And there's Mr. Heron. And he's just standing stuck still, watching for wee fish or crabs. And then he will pounce. And the harbour here was used in Game of Thrones. And there's a nice 750 sitting in here. Yeah, there it is. I considered buying one of these way back when. And there's a man standing in the root of it. And if I hadn't got the sciatica in my legs, I think I would go for one of these bikes, if I could find one. So I'm still happy with my wee 600 cruiser VT Honda. And we're just sitting overlooking the harbour, shooting the breeze, and we're looking across, and we're seeing this old boat yard, and it's got a concreted up bit here, which was obviously the entrance in years gone by, or one of the entrances, and it's obviously been uh, uh, re-roofed. And there's an entrance there, whether that entrance was there in days gone by I don't know. But we're looking down and we're seeing this here. And was this um, to launch? Uh, holes of boots that had been built in the in the shed, and the rudder fitted down the centre, 
and is this a launching high high tide launching point? Don't know. Any any answers would be uh, welcome. And we're looking across here to to the sort of jutting out bit here. It's almost like an island. And there's holes just about a metre down. And I wonder what they're for. And some of them are a wee bit closer to the top. So what's that about? And you're looking across this side and there aren't any. Maybe I ask too many questions. But the limestone quarrying really made this town. And without the intervention of uh, Lady Londonderry and the insight and the foresight and the, the creativity of this lady, the place wouldn't really exist the way it does today. She was a smart woman, very smart woman. And that old shed down at the bottom probably dates from the 1890s as well. It's been re-roofed as well. something fascinating to see. Lovely floral display there. Carnock Harbour. Fascinating wee spot. I know I quite like it. And as I say, it was used in Game of Thrones. A historic. For goes any thoughts of becoming one of the faceless men and negotiates passage to Westeros with a couple of traitors. As she stands admiring the titan of Bravas, she is approached by an old woman who is quickly revealed to be the waif. Having been given the go-ahead by Jigger Hagger to kill Arya, the, wa the waif repeatedly stabs Arya. She only manages to escape by jumping off the bridge into the river. She surfaces gasping and crawls up the steps into the streets of Bravos. The harbour steps in the pretty coastal town of Carnlock were used for this short scene when Arya resurfaces in Season 6, Episode 7, The Broken Man. And uh, there's a couple of interesting plaques on the side of this building here. The uh, boot shed. During World War II, pigeons were used by the forces as message carriers. Paddy was one of the 30 pigeons delivered by the RAF Hearn to operational units of the first. U.S. Army on 8th June 1944. They were used in connection with a secret task, codename U-2. 
Paddy was released in Normandy at around 8.15 on July 7th or June 7th, carrying a coded information on the Allied advance. He returned to his loft in Hampshire in just four hours, 50 minutes. This was the fastest time recorded by a message-carrying pigeon during the Normandy landings for a service. Paddy was awarded the Dickon Medal on September 1st, 1944. He had previously served at RAF Ballycally on Air Sea Rescue Missions. Andrew Hughes, JP of Carnock, was the proud owner of Paddy. He handed over several of his pigeons to be trained along with others for service with the forces. Paddy lived for 11 years and to date is the only Irish recipient of the Dickon Medal, which is the animal equivalent to the Victoria Cross. There you go. And there's another interesting plaque over here. This uh, commemorates the loss of the SS Peridot Memorial Plaque. On the night of November 26, 1905, a coastal steamer, the Peridot, having been anchored off Carnock, awaiting the tide, sought shelter in Larn uh, Lock from a storm, but never reached safety. Stranded in a heavy sea and breaking up at Gnergan Point Isle McGee. This plaque is erected by the Larne District Historical S Centre Society to commemorate the seafaring men who lost their lives in the disaster. Most of those men were from the village of Carnock. One, there was Hugh O'Kane, Patrick Black, John McMahon, John Dara, James McGinty, James Stewart, Alexander McNeil, Alexander Ferguson and finally Robert McCaller, a seaman of Scotland. Watch ye therefore, for in such an hour as this ye think not your Lord cometh. And uh, how many men were lost? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine guys, and eight of them were from Carnlock. And the sea's a very dangerous place, and it still is the same today. So there's my wee trip, our wee trip to Carnlock.